Well, good morning. morning. How is everybody today? Good, good, good. Well, welcome to church, man. If today's your first time here at Connection Church, whether you're here in person or you're joining us online, man, we are honored that you're here today uh, and that you would come and be a part of what God's doing here at Connection. Connection Church, we're a church that just wants to connect you to Jesus first and foremost and then help you take your next steps. And so um, we would love for you, if it is your first time, uh, if you're here in the room, there's a, a connection card in your seat backs in front of you. You can just take one of those, fill it out at the end of service. Uh, we have a gift for you uh, out in the hallway, and then we're going to donate $5 in your honor to an organization called A21 that helps fight human trafficking around the world. If you're online and you're joining us, uh, you can, uh, it's a little, the steps are a little different. You just text the word online. To our text number, 706-979-2438. And when you do that, we'll, uh, if you'll fill out your address, we'll send you a, a gift as well. And, but we'll still donate $5 in your honor as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, before we get started, I want to celebrate something that happened this week uh, and just honor the people that put it on and worked so hard to, uh, to, to make it happen. And this week, we had the opportunity... Uh, to take VBS on the road. And, um, and so we, we did up at the Hope Center this week. Uh, we had a group of volunteers that just got together and, man, did a phenomenal job of, of just loving on kids and loving on uh, the people at the Hope Center uh, and just, just doing VBS there, uh, just kind of... Uh, I love it. We're a church that, man, our vision is not that people will just come here, but that we'll go to the people. And so that's what we were doing this week. And so I saw... People just showing up. Uh, we had some some people who haven't been coming to our church very long showing up and and teaching, uh, and it was just phenomenal to see uh, people just be a part of of what God's doing. And I just want to celebrate uh, celebrate that this week and uh, celebrate Suzanne Wright and honor her and all that she did this week and putting it together. Uh, and that God uh, just just opened a path for her uh, to 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 do it, and that she was willing. Uh, and listening to God in doing that, and that she got a team around her really quick, and uh, all the team that was there to do it this week. I know um, Sarah and Allie and Ashley and all you guys that were kind of, uh, I know I'm missing somebody and I'm sorry, but, uh, but, but just you guys that were just, man, just open to what God was doing this week. So I want to honor you guys and thank you guys so much for all that you did this week. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Just a phenomenal week. And um, I know we have some pictures over in the cafe. If you haven't gotten your coffee yet, um, you can go get it after church now because you can't leave now to go get it uh, because I'm about to preach, all right? So uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of First John chapter 4. And we're going to uh, wrap up our series called Prove It this week where we've been talking about uh, basically that the world knows us by how we love people. And so we're to, to, because God loves us, that we're to go prove it to other people that God loves us by loving them. And um, and the Apostle John is, um, we're, we've been studying this book, 1 John, and that's basically what he was about. I, I like to call John the love doctor uh, because he wrote, about, he wrote about love all the time. And he even called himself the disciple that Jesus loved. And so, um, and so we centered this, this, um, this series around our core value, we love because God loves. And that was basically John's driving force behind writing this book. And so I want to dive right in and then we're going to come back and we're kind of un- going to unpack these verses and then we're going to slip in later on to, to chapter 5 and just look at some, some really good things in chapter 5. And so uh, 1 John 4, we're starting verse 13, and it's, it'll be on the screen. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along, or in the Bible app, you can as well. It says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Verse 19, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother or sister. Has anyone heard this phrase before? And if you can finish this phrase, let's finish it for me. Actions speak louder than... 
Come on, y'all are, y'all are on top of it today. I'm going to just judge by the, by the fact that you guys knew that, that you've probably either said that before or you've definitely heard it. If you haven't heard it, welcome to church. You've now, you learned something new this morning. So, but, but here's, where do actions come from, right? If actions speak louder than words, the things that I say, if my actions speak louder, where do my actions come from? Well, it comes from who I am. It comes from my identity. It comes from what's deep down. And when I get squeezed, that's what comes out, right? If you don't believe me, just get put in a tight situation and a little bit of a pinch and a little bit of a corner and you get squeezed a little bit. What's on the inside will come out. So if it's ugly, it's going to come out ugly. If it's things of God, it'll come out things of God. And so, but have you ever, ever really thought of or, or studied uh, who you are in Christ? Like, what is your identity in Christ and what the Bible says about you because you are a believer, because you're a Christian? Not if you just call yourself a Christian, not if we just say we're a Christian, but we actually, we actually have a relationship with the Father. What it means to, to, to have your identity in Christ. Well, if you haven't studied that and you haven't really looked deep into that, luckily, I have. And I have a pretty exhaustive list for you today. And so in just a second... I'm going to read this list, and I, I want you to uh, just take this list in, okay? But, but I want to pause just for a second, real quick, because, um, because I, I was, as we were singing that last, last song over there, I felt like the Holy Spirit was, was just impressioning upon me something that um, somebody here today, and I'm not a big prophetic guy, but I believe the Holy Spirit was telling me somebody here today um, was struggling as they were singing that. That, that, that somebody here today was saying that they've made their life about so much other than God. And they were struggling as we were trying to sing nothing else. But you, God, nothing else, nothing else. You were struggling. You couldn't, you, you, I don't think you could sing the words. Because you were sitting here in your heart, you were saying, I, I, I can't sing that right now. And what I want to tell you this morning, what I want to tell you this morning, if that was you, whether you were here in this room, whether you were singing online, what I want to tell you is, is that, that, that God is everything, Amen. that he is enough for you, yes. that, 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 that you can do it, that, you, that, that there is a possibility of you being able to, to come before him cleansed. And, and what I want to tell you is that uh, if, if maybe that wasn't you and maybe you were, weren't able to sing that because you don't even know Jesus, well, I want to give you the opportunity right here, right now. I want to give you the opportunity and tell you that Jesus loves you and that, that he desperately, desperately wants to be your savior. There's nothing more that he wants right now than you to repent and, and be your savior. And, and so when I read this list, this is who you are in Christ. If, you're, if you don't call yourself, if you say I'm not a Christian or, or you're struggling with it or whatever, let me tell you right now, you can, you can nail that down right here in this moment. We don't have to wait for the end of service. I don't, I'm not going to stand down here. We're not going to sing just as I am. We're not going to, you know, I'm not going to call you forward. You can do it right now in your heart and just confess that Jesus is the Lord and Savior and that you want to repent and that you believe that and that you, he is your Savior if you believe that. And so if, if, if that's you right now, you can do that. And what I would tell you is what we're about to read is, is you. It's who you are in Christ, whether you've been a Christian for the last 30 seconds or you've been a Christian for the last 30 years. It, this is who you are. And so what I want all of us to do is I want you to just close your eyes. And this is a pretty long list. And I want you to just reflect upon this. And this is who you are through Christ. And I'm, you can use this as your own, as you pray through this, as I speak it and you, we pray through it. Here's what I want you to hear, that through Christ, you're dead to sin, Romans 6, 11. Through Christ, you are spiritually alive, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Through Christ, you are forgiven, Colossians 2, 13 and 1 John 2, 12. Through Christ, you're declared righteous, 1 Corinthians 1, 30 and 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Through Christ, you're a child of God, Romans 8, 16 and Philippians 2, 15. Through Christ, you are God's possession, Titus 2, 14. Through Christ, you are blessed with all spiritual blessings, Ephesians 3, 1. Through Christ, you are a citizen of heaven, Philippians 3, 20. Through Christ, you are free from the law, Romans 8, 2. Through Christ, you're crucified with him, Galatians 2, 
2.20. Through Christ, you are an heir of God, Romans 8.17. Through Christ, you're free from the desires of the flesh, Galatians 5.24. Through Christ, you're declared blameless and innocent, Philippians 2.15. Through Christ, you're the light of the world, Matthew 5.14 and 15 and Philippians 2.15. Through Christ, you're victorious over Satan, Luke 10, 19. Through Christ, you're cleansed from sin, 1 John 1, 7. Through Christ, you're set free from the power of sin, Colossians 2, 11 through 15. Through Christ, you are secure in him, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Through Christ, you're at peace with God, Romans 5, 1 and Philippians 4, 6 through 9. And through Christ, you are loved by God, 1 John 4, 10. I don't know about you, but that stirs me a little bit. That list. That's who we are in Christ. When you're a Christian, when you when you that that's what you have when when you when you put your faith and your hope in Jesus. That is what, what we are. And that's how much Jesus loves us, that he was able to, to give us those things through his sacrifice. Because here's what I know: loving others, as we've been talking about, takes some supernatural assistance. <laughs> right? It's really hard to love others, especially in, when, when times are tough. Because our natural response is hate. Now, we don't like to think of it that way, but that's our natural response. You know how I know? I've driven in traffic before. <laughs> Someone cuts you off, like I am not one to turn to loving them. I'm usually going to tell them what number they are, right? Like, we're, like oh, let's be honest. I'm a human, right? I'm, I get mad when somebody cuts me off because... Like I, I saw earlier, we were in, right in our meeting a little bit ago, and there was somebody that posted on Facebook, and I really laughed at it. It says that I think someone who buys um, a certain type of car, I'm not going to say a certain type of car because one of y'all might drive it, and I don't want I don't, I don't to get on one of y'all, but this is a certain type of car. It's like they sign a, a contract at the dealership that they're going to drive slow in the left-hand lane. When they buy that car, like it's automatic that they're going to drive in the left-hand lane and they're going to drive like five miles under a mile, mile an hour under the speed limit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like I'm a left-hand lane driver and if you're in that left-hand lane and you're going, I know we have a police officer in the house, so I'm not going to indict myself right now, <laughs> but, but I'm not going to tell you how fast I can, but I do not follow the speed limit. I will say that, okay? I, drove, I had a golf tournament yesterday down in South Georgia and I drove back up um, my truck might have hit triple digits at least once. But, uh, but anyway, like, 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 but loving people is hard, right? Loving people is hard, and it takes supernatural assistance, which is why I'll tell you the first thing that we need to know today is love is proof that we have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when we're able to love other people, it's proof that we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And I love these verses because these, how, how John opens these verses up in verse 13, he gives us a look inside the Trinity, the, 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 the entire Trinity right here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here's what he says. He says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us what? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know, we rely on love God has for us. God is love and whoever, uh, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Now, we've talked about this before, and I've told you this before. I don't fully understand the Trinity, okay? Like, I've got a degree from seminary. I don't fully understand the Trinity because I don't think I can because I'm a finite being. I'm not infinite, right? Like, like I, I, I don't fully understand the Godhead three in one. I understand the roles and I believe it and I have faith in it, but, but I don't understand it. Like I know y'all probably heard of the egg, right? You got the, the three parts of the egg and it's kind of like they're all still the egg, but, but here's the thing. You crack the egg and you know, if, if you make scrambled eggs, let's say you crack the egg and you put it in a bowl, you scramble it up. Guess what? Well, the, the, the shell is now the shell. The egg and the white are now mixed in over here, right? Well, I can't, it's the shell is now over here. Like the shell is not no longer here. That's not how God is. Like, you can't crack God and separate him from the Father and the Holy Spirit and put him over here. He is still here. <sighs> like, I don't get that. I, like, it's, it's beyond my little pea brain thinking, okay? And, and, and I don't think you really get it either. 
if we're honest. You may say you do, but here's the thing. It requires faith to believe those things. It requires faith. And, here, and, and God even says in his word that there's some things about the gospel that are a mystery. And we just don't get. We're not going to get. We never will. But I think, I think the problem is too many people try to, try to reason everything that's in the Bible. And when they can't reason at all, they dismiss it all. And that's just not what it's meant to be. It requires faith. And if we're really honest, different topic, different discussion, different day, it takes a whole lot more faith to believe some of the things that they believe than it does what the, what the Bible teaches, okay? But we see in these verses that this is the fellowship of the Trinity, the roles of the Trinity, that the Spirit lives in us, that the Father sent the Son to be love for us, to, to love us, uh, to, to, to die for us, to be our salvation, and that we're able to live and be reconciled back to the Father through that. That's the fellowship of the Trinity. I love what John Piper says. He says this, I think if, if we will love each other and those outside with a distinct supernatural love when we taste the fellowship, when we taste the fellowship of the Trinity. So go back up to our identity in Christ. What we talked about, all that, that full list that I gave you. We're able to have that because of the work of the Trinity. Because, because we have fellowship with the Trinity, that we have the Spirit in us to have a relationship uh, to the Father through the Savior. That's the work of the Trinity in our lives as Christians. That, that's, that's who we are, and love is proof that we have that Holy Spirit. Love is proof that we have that Holy Spirit. The next thing I would tell you that John goes on to talk about here is love gives us confidence while we wait. Love gives us confidence while we wait. Now, here's the thing about John's argument for loving others. It's been pretty straight line. Like, it's been pretty much like, okay, love is proof. Uh, how you love others is proof that you have the Holy Spirit. It's proof that you're a, a believer. It's proof that you know Jesus. It's, it, like, he's talked about it in all the chapters before this. That's what he's been saying. And he kind of switches here. And he says, he takes a turn. He starts talking about eternity. He starts talking about judgment day. He starts talking about what's going to happen. Have you ever thought about this? Like, like, have you ever really thought about this? Like, like, why we love because God loves us? Like, we, not, we don't just love for the here and now. We love in the here and now, but we don't just love for the here and now. Because we don't live. As followers of Jesus, we don't live for the here and now. Y'all, I don't know if y'all remember, there's a rope analogy that I've done before. You know, we take the big rope and we put it across the stage and then we've got a little bit over here and then I put like a piece of red tape around it uh, that represents your existence in time. Uh, and this is all before you and then the rope is, is your existence and then the rope after that is all is after you and I, I let it dangle where you can't see the end so it's just like, it just keeps going and going and going and you, you know, there's no end to the rope and there's like thousands of feet beyond that and it just keeps going and it's just infinity. And beyond. Thank you, Buzz Lightyear. Sorry, that just popped in my head. But anyway, like, 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 but that's like, we look at that and, and too many of us live for the red tape. Too many of us live for the here and now, but we're really living for eternity. We're really here for eternity. And, and how we love in the here and now is because we believe that we're not living for the here and now. Let me ask you this. Do you live your life with judgment day in mind? I don't, I don't, I don't think we do enough, if I'm honest. Like, I, I don't, right? And here's what John's saying is this is how love is made complete among us so that we have confidence, that we have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we're like Jesus. So the here and now, we're supposed to love like Jesus. But, but there's no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The word hell, the literal place, we believe there is a literal place called hell. And that word appears 12 times in the New Testament. Okay? 11 of those, Jesus was the one talking about it, which is why we believe in a place called hell. Because if he talked about it, I believe it. Okay? And he warned people that the judgment was coming, that there's a day coming. And if you don't repent, it's that that place was made for the for the devil and his fire angels and, and and it won't if if you don't repent and that's where you're going and 11 times jesus tried to warn people about this in his ministry he kept he told them 11 times because jesus wants us to be ready for judgment day 
because it's coming. Every single person, every single person, no matter who you are. And Jesus was warning about it. And how we love others is not only proof that we have the Holy Spirit in us, but it's confidence for us while we wait for the judgment day. That we'll be able to stand before the throne and say, I love like Jesus loved. I, I went out and I, I did what I, I could do and we'll have no fear. We'll stand bold before the throne. And, and what John was reminding of us in this is, yeah, we're in the here and now and we love in the here and now, but we don't only love for the here and now. We love and it gives us confidence for the future. And I think John continued on as he moved through these passages and he, and he kept reminding us. How many of y'all, um, I know this is gonna be 100%, right? Uh, I, how many of y'all uh, only have to be told to do something once and you do it? What? Y'all have to be told over and over to do stuff? No, right? Like, if you got kids, you're like, <laughs> go clean your room, go clean your room, go clean your room, go clean your room. I, my dad told me to do it. I did things, he told me one time. He's not here, he can't verify it. <laughs> and y'all know I'm lying, right? He would tell you the same thing. But, but here's the thing, like, like, like you, the Bible's the same way. You ever notice that? And I think that's what John's, he's, he comes back full circle and he reminds us of this next thing. And he goes back to it and he says, love is our command. Love is our command as followers of Jesus. In Matthew 22, there was a, um, there was a religious lawyer, a lawyer of that time. He came to Jesus and he said, uh, so he said, rabbi, teacher, preacher, pastor, what's the greatest commandment, right? Y'all have probably heard this story. If, you, if, you, if you've been around here anytime, we, I've preached on this before. He says, what's the greatest commandment? And, and Jesus says, well, the greatest commandment, which Jesus was quoting Deuteronomy, the law of Moses at that time, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Deuteronomy 6. And he, he's quoting, he's, he's telling us that. And then I love Jesus because he never stops, right? He always gives us a little something extra. He always gives us more than we bargain for. And he says, but, 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 but I've got a second command. And it's just as good as the first command. And that's to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, here's the thing in that, because that would have caused some ripples, Right? Because if you keep reading on, the next story in, the guy asks, well, who's my neighbor? And then he tells him the, good, the story of the Good Samaritan. <laughs> and you're like, ugh. And I was reading something this week. We were talking about the Good Samaritan. And he was talking about how like, like the, the, when the Jewish guy was beaten and left on the side of the road, uh, basically for dead. Like, I can imagine his excitement when he saw the priest coming, right? I, I can imagine his excitement. He's like, oh, some help. And the priest walks to the other side of the road. And then the Levite, which was the worship leader in the church at the time. Imagine his excitement. Oh, somebody that's going to love me. Walks the other side. And then the Samaritan, the guy that's not supposed to love him. And, and Jesus, this would have sent ripples through, through, that, through the congregation and through the audience that was listening to him. But what John is saying here is like, what Jesus was saying is that it's equal to love God and love your, love your neighbor. What John takes it a step further He's not, he's not trying to one-up Jesus here. He's just saying it's impossible to love God without loving your neighbor. He says you're a liar, that you can't do it. You, it it's just not feasible. You can't say you love God and not love people because that's who God loves. That's like telling me that you like me but hate my wife. I got news for you. If you hate my wife, there's something wrong with you, first off. But like, but like if you hate my wife, you're, gonna, you're not going to see eye to eye with me. And what John, he was saying, it's impossible to love God without loving others. Look what he said. He said, we love because he first loved us. Just a reiteration of our core value that we have. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother and sister is a what? A liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they haven't seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God 
must love their brother and sister. You know, the reason that we're commanded by, like, to love others is because God's sole purpose in sending his son was because he loved us. John 3, 16. Probably the most famous verse, way before Tim Tebow ever made it famous again. Right? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And the reason we're command, commanded to love others is because that's what God has done for us. And he expects nothing more out of you and me than what he did. And nothing less out of me, you and me than what he did. In a couple months, we're, um, every year around August, when we kind of get back into school, we do, a, we do a spiritual discipline series because we believe as a church that that's how you live and die in your walk with Jesus is through the spiritual disciplines. It ain't coming to church. It's part of it. But really, your everyday spiritual life, disciplining yourself to walk with Jesus daily is how you're going to make it or break it in your walk with Jesus. And, and what we say it, it, every year in that, in that uh, series is the reason that we are so high on the spiritual disciplines is because that's how Jesus lived his life. Like Jesus lived his life through the spiritual disciplines. If you go and you really study his life, yes, he was Jesus, yes, he was God, but he was a 100% man at the time while he was here, and he had to live just like you and I lived, and that was through communion and spiritual disciplines with the Father. And so, so what we would tell you is that, that because he lived his life through that, and, and when he came, his 33 years he was on earth is an example of how we should live our lives in the way he loved the way he taught, the way that, that he lived his life, the way he prayed, is the same way we should. And so, so Jesus, God, expects nothing more out of us than he expected out of himself when he was here. And the beauty in loving others, the beauty in going outside these walls and showing others the love of Jesus, because that's what the Bible says in, in the Gospel of John that we'll be known by is the way we love others. Know that we're a disciple by how we love. And that command to love others, ultimately that command is our victory. It's our victory. Look down in verse five, or chapter 5. And John kind of repeats himself and he kind of, as he's finishing up this, this epistle, he, 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 he just kind of repeats himself to start. He says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. Well, what was his command? His command was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those were his commands. Love, love. Love God, love others. Verse three, in fact, this is love for God. To what? Keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. What's that, what that means is that because we love God, it's, it's, it, it, it's not really a chore anymore. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So y'all remember back, Jesus said, in this life, in this world, you'll have what? You'll have trouble, you'll have trial, you'll have tribulation. And he says, take heart, for I've overcome the world. And, and even Jesus' brother James said it, that, that um, you should consider it pure joy when facing trials and tribulations. Now, uh, we've all been through trials, we've all been, joy is not the word that comes to mind when we think of that, right? Not mine anyway. If it is yours, maybe you could teach me little things. But, 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 but the reason, like, we, we are promised that there's, we're going to go through junk. It's a promise from Jesus. You will have trouble. You will face trials. You will face tribulations. But we can take heart because he overcame the world. And here's the beauty of this. Because he's given us his spirit to live in us we get to overcome the world. And love, the command to love God and love others ultimately becomes our victory. And then verse five it says, it just basically states what I just explained. It says, who is that that overcomes the world? The one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. 
And so my, my, my plea and my challenge to us as connectors, as a as Connection Church and as people who are called to love is this. The world is going to know us. The world is going to know Mickey. And he's going to know you. That you're a follower of Jesus by how you love them. And if I'm honest, which I'm, I, I'll be honest, I fail at this miserably daily. Okay. And there's many times, because on the back of my truck, I have a sticker that says, everyone's welcome. And I'm not, a, I've already mentioned my driving record over here, okay? We're not going to hash that, continue to hash that out. And it hits me periodically when I'm driving like a maniac that I've got a sticker on the back of my truck that represents our church and God. But more importantly, the person behind the wheel represents God in that moment. And I just wonder sometimes that the way I drive and some of the dumb things I do as I'm driving, and I don't flick anybody off. I should, I don't, you know, I'll raise my, I'll give them some of this, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, I, you know. What are you doing? Get out of my way. You're in the left-hand lane. But I wonder just sometimes if, it hits me, I guess you could call this the Holy Spirit inside of me, it hits me. Is this what Jesus would do? You know, the old WWJD, I know that's pretty popular again. Is this how Jesus would love if he was driving this vehicle right now? And I, I get convicted, pretty bad. And I, I wonder if there's other areas of my life that I could shine some light on. You know, we talked earlier about, about darkness and light and the difference uh, of those and when, 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 our, when our sins are illuminated, when they're opened, that it changes us. And so our challenge today, as we leave here, as we wrap up this, this series, our challenge is, how can we love? Like God has loved us. How can you love? Like God has loved you. Because if I gave you that list that I read earlier, we could probably fill in an instance on each one how God has loved you through something in your life on each one of those. I know I could. The hardest part, I think, for me is always remembering As I mentioned last week, how do you love those people? Well, you got to remember, you are those people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you today uh, for your son. I thank you for sending your son that you saw fit to love us, that you so loved the world that you gave your son for us. And so, Father, in these moments, God, God, help us to, to just... Dig deep in our soul and help us just to, to shine a light on, on the dark places. God, loving is not easy. And if we're really honest, we understand that it's not easy because we know ourselves. <laughs> and you still love us. So Father, we thank you. So God, in these moments, I, I pray that you would just cleanse us, God. God, help us to move towards you. Help us to move uh, towards, towards who you are. God, God, mold us and shape us into your image. Help us to live like you lived when you were here. Father, I thank you for your son. I thank you for your spirit. And because of that, we can, we can be reconciled to you. Thank you. God, I pray we leave here with, with renewed fire in our heart to love you and love others. Thank you for all you do for us, God. It's in your name. Amen.